Oh, I mean, it is very really not compatible in terms of the global market. The global market size of the secondaries is $130 billion today, and which it is a really, really big in terms of the size. When you compare to Africa, it is still nascent and it's still immature and it's still actually trying to establish itself from a, 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 the, the point where it is today. I mean, first and foremost, to be able to develop it, what you need is one is the exit opportunities so that an investor will have faith, say, I'm, I'm buying this asset, I could be able to sell it. So one is the exit opportunities. Secondly, is in terms of uh, the market among the GPs to be able to see that a sale, a secondary sale is not a form of a failure to a GP, but is more of a progression is part of an exit. I mean, specialization, you could be able to put it into two ways. You have where it's a clear specialization by sector, by geography, and either also by size of the companies. The fund manager might be willing to invest mid-size, large cap, and then the second part is what I call generalists. And that one is more, a fund manager says, will be sector agnostic. The same applies on geography. And that strategy could be what I call um, one inch deep, one mile wide. In terms of sectors, I will say renewable energy is the sector that I have hope in terms of because we've seen massive growth in that sector. It, originally, there was more projects done with government as an off-taker, and now we've seen them transitioning into corporates, B2B, and now we're seeing even going to retail, home, rooftop solar. For us as FMO, we have recently announced an investment of $100 million into Red Rocket, a pan-African renewable energy. And in terms of for 2024, with regard about geography, which Africa is difficult to be able to pick a region or a country. However, that will be subject to the following things. One, the political landscape. We are forthcoming, a lot of elections coming up next year in Africa. And capital will always follow the least resistance path. So where the African geographies, they are going to be either liberalizing their sectors, we're hearing good things coming up in Ethiopia, opening up the banking sector, the political landscape, policies that are going to be put in place, and also the highly indebted countries that are in negotiation with the IMF, because that it will boost foreign local currency, and more investors will be starting to be interested in those markets.